Okay. So, a random Stormy Stories today, because this will be a double upload, because I found online, I stumbled across a digitalized version of a article that ran, it's basically Ruffian's ob obituary that ran in the New York Times. Ruffian is one of, was one of the greatest race horses of all time. She was undefeated in her first 10 starts. She sadly broke down during a match race with the, with the top colt fullest pleasure. She broke down in the lead. She was a horse who just was amazing. And I think if she hadn't broke down, she would have won that match race. So this to the so this is the anniversary of her death, July seventh. So I'm hoping to get this out. It's almost nine o'clock at night, so let's see if I can get this done. I haven't read through the article yet, so let's go. Ruffian, fighting to the end, was destroyed this morning, eight hours after the extraordinary filly broke her leg during her match race with foolish pleasure. Both semoid bones in her both semoids in her right ankle were shattered as a three-year-old animal dueled with foolish pleasure in the early in the early going of the race at Belmont Park. At three quarter at three and a half a three and a half hour operation across the street in the in the equine hospital failed. She fought the cat. She fought the cast a team of doctors had placed on the leg. She struggled and fought so hard coming out of anesthesia that she pulled out the nails and the special shoe said she struggled so hard she struggled and fought so hard coming out of anesthesia that she pulled out the nails in the special shoes said dr alex harthill one of the surgeons the shoe had been placed on the hoof to support the cast with the shoe and with the shoe off the cast slipped and dr harthill said there was no alternative but to kill the animal humanely with an injection <laughs> dr harthill said at 2:25 a.m. The cast had become entangled in the cast had become an entangled mess, and there was intensive swelling and hemorrhaging. If we put her through anesthesia and another operation, it would have been the worst. It will only, it only would have been worse the next time. We talked to Mr. Janney, Stuart Janney, owner of Ruffian, and he agreed. So she's being put down now. A massive dose of pen or arbital was used to destroy Ruffian. The th the $350 match race the $350 great match race had ended with foolish pleasure the uncontested winner after his rival had been pulled up after three and a half furlongs or seven sixteenths of a mile of the one and a fourth mile contest. Ruffian had been slightly ahead when she suddenly slowed down, both semi bones in her ankle and her right front foreleg shattered. Her racing career ended. Now, across the street in Dr. William O. Reed's Equine Hospital, Mr. and Mrs. Stuart Janney, Ruffian's owners, waited this morning while Dr. Reed and four other surgeons operated. Oh god, I'm actually getting... choked up. Okay. More than two hours after the operation, Ruffian was lying on her side in a padded stall, used as a recovery room. In shock, weary, af we weary after expending so much energy in her head, and in her head and he in her head and head duel with foolish pleasure, dehydrated and with badly contaminated wounds, she had almost died before reaching the operating table. It was a desperate situation, Doctor Reed said. But after a hydraulic lift had taken her from the table, Ruffian had a long way to go. The spirit that made her such a great racehorse is working against her, Dr. Ra Dr. Reed said. Said Dr. Reed. She's a fighter. What the doctors were hoping was that Ruffian, getting on her feet, would remain calm. Injured horses, especially spirited ones, can often, often injure themselves further as soon as they stand after an operation. In Ruffian's case, this was fatal. The cause of death might well be the spirit. The cause of death might well be that spirit. It is my personal opinion, said Doctor Reed, that the severe stress of ex that the severe stress of an extreme effort, an ultimate effort, contributed to her accident. 
Dr. Manuel Gilman, the New York Racing Association's veterinarian, and one of the five surgeons said, We'll do everything possible to save her. He was the first to attend to the Philly at He was the first to attend the Philly on the Belmont stretch. Belmont backstretch where the accident occurred. With a record of ten triumphs in her ten race career, Ruffian was the two to five choice to beat her male rival in the one and a fourth mile test on the fast track. But after three and a half furlongs or seven sixteenths of a mile, Ruffian who was in a slight lead, suddenly slowed down. Uh, so this is not going to be the most polished one ever, because I cannot... <laughs> okay, I'm going to... I'm just going to say his last name, Vasquez. I can't remember in what words the H, the J makes an H sound, so we're going to move past that. <laughs> who had ridden Mr. and Mrs. Stuart Janney's filly in most of her races managed to steer Ruffy into the outside fence before dismounting. Dismounting. Before dismounting, Vasquez said, I heard a sound that seemed like a twig snapping, and I moved her to the outside as quickly as I could. After Ruffy went to the side, the horse ambulance drew up, and Ruffy hobbled aboard. She was taken to the stable area in the back stretch. Meanwhile, foolish pleasure with Barlio. Bezos, mildly, steer, mildly steering him, completed the distance in 2.02 and four-fifths, just four-fifths of a second slower than his time for winning the Kentucky Derby two months ago. Foolish Pleasure carried 126 pounds as against 121 pounds for the Philly. For the Phil. Three-year-old scale weight for each sex. <laughs> Foolish Pleasure earned the first prize of 225000 but according to racing rules, the 125000 second money need not have been awarded because Ruffian did not complete the course. However, NYR... R.A. donated the runner-up prize money to Mr. and Mrs. Janney anyway. Foolish Pleasure re returned $3.80 for $2 to those in the crowd of 5,764 5, who had bet on him. At Barn 34 on the backstretch, Dr. Gilman attempted to T Dr. Gilman attended the stricken animal, whose right ankle showed protruding bones and copious amounts of blood. He administered three heavy tranquilizer shots and put the filly's foot in an ice bath before enclosing the area in plastic cases. The race didn't last a half mile, but there was tension and excitement. Foolish Pleasure was the first out of the chute, but Ruffian went along with him and presently took the lead. She passed the quarter-mile pole in, 22, in point .22 seconds, one-fifth, one out of five with John Greer's three-year-old colt right behind, him on the, right behind on the outside, the two horses occasionally brushing up against each other, the two horses occasionally brushing each other. When it appeared that a steering duel was in order, the tragedy took place. Vasquez in the jockey's quarters had a mist in his eyes as, in response to the obvious question, what happened, he said. She broke her leg, her right front. That's what happened. Then the saddened jockey went on to say, Ruffian didn't break fast, and the track wasn't too deep in the chute. But she went into a different action on the main track, and was getting smooth. She's even with foolish pleasure, but then he went by her and her leg broke. She tried to go on for about seven yards, and she had to stop. Ruffian was a Kentucky homebred daughter of reviewer and shenanigans, hence her name. She was trained by Frank Whiteley, one of the foremost in the profession. In her 1974 campaign, Ruffian won her first race, a maiden special event by 15 lengths. After that, it was all stake. It was all stakes competition for her: the fashion, the Astoria, the sorority, and the spinaway. After the spinaway, Ruffian suffered a hairline fracture on her right hind leg. In September, in Whiteley, 
solicitously supervised her convalescence. Okay, I, do I, am I crazy or are some of these words just not in a thing anymore? Okay. He did not return her to the races until April 14th when she won an allowance race. After that, she raced exclusively in stakes, capturing the Comley, the Acorn, the Mother Goose, and the Coaching Club American Oaks. Her earnings were 313439 before her accident yesterday. Ironically, a ruffian was reportedly insured for the first time just two weeks ago. The amount of insurance was not known, but it, it, but it was believed much less than the one million that Foolish Pleasure was insured for. However, in breeding, at least, male. However, in breeding, at least, males are more valuable than females. A stallion can service thirty to thirty-five males in one year and can stand for fifteen seasons or more. A broodmare at most has one full year. Taking into account barren years, many produce only eight or nine horses in her career. Foolish Pleasure's reputation was overshadowed by the undefeated filly. But the Florida bred son of What a Pleasure is a legitimate star in his own right. He was undefeated in seven races in 1974 and was named the nation's top two year old. He started this season with an allowance victory at Hialeah and then won. And then won the flamingo here, there. And then won the flamingo there. He was upset in the Florida Derby, finishing third, but came back to win the Wood Memorial and the Kentucky Derby. He then finished second in both the Preakness and the Belmont Stakes. Leroy Jolly trains foolish pleasure for Gearer, a banking executive from Knoxville, Tennessee, who paid twenty thousand dollars for the horse. Foolish Pleasure's total earnings are now $971,107. Vasquez, Vasquez had ridden Foolish Pleasure in most of his races, but he chose the filly for yesterday's encounter. As an alternative, Jolly selected Biza, who, like Vasquez, is a Panamanian and who, like his counter, like his compatriot, is one of the best jockeys in the world. Biza was touched by the accident. I am so sorry to see such a fine filly get hurt, he said. My horse broke good and pushed the filly to get her and he pushed the filly to get her to the lead. I was going down the back stretch and she was working to get away, but my colt stayed with her. Then I saw it happen. I could hear the crack. What a shame. This was the most widely heralded match race in New York since arm since armed defeated assault in nineteen forty seven. Since then, major, major match races saw Catapult beat Coltown in Pimlico in 1949. Nazara beat Swaps in Chicago. Convenience beat Typecast at Hollywood Park in 1972. And Chris Everett beat Miss Muckett in Hollywood last year. Uh, the Nassau County Handicap, the seventh, the seven furlong test that had been the feat that would have been the feature were it not for the match race presented a mare opposing six males. The female lost this 55,150 uh, 55, event too. Honorable Miss, a five-year-old mare owned by Penn Y. Burn Farm and trained by Faye Whiteley, was a three-to-one favorite, but she finished ahead of only one horse. Queen City Lad, owned by Charles Haft and ridden by Daryl Montoya, one by one and a th one and three four lengths over proper Bos Bos Bostonian, Bostonian, who was by proper Bostonian, who was a half length in front of Paim. Queen City Lad, second most of the way, scored his second victory in a row. He was timed at. One twenty-one and three fifths under a feather of one hundred and nine pounds, and was paid, and paid sixteen twenty. Honorable Miss, the winner of her four, four previous races, carried one hundred and twenty-six pounds. And God, I have read news articles, uh, for people who have died that are shorter than this one. Um, so quick explanation furlongs and lengths are just distances on the racetrack um i'm not still not great at reading out racetrack stuff because i've only been following horse racing for about two years now 
three years now. But this had a huge impact. And I may just upload this just raw. So you guys may be getting raw footage today. Because uh, I don't I don't think I can edit this realistically and get sleep. So basically, Ruffian's death had a huge impact on the sport and how injuries are treated. And there has never been a match race since. This was the end of match races, which is probably a good thing. Because you're taking two of the best horses and they're just going to keep fighting and fighting for the lead. I don't think people really understand how much these horses fight for it if they really are good. And if they really do love to race, they're going to fight for that lead. And that's what Ruffian was doing and that's what cost her her life. So at the end of the day, a lot of good came out of Ruffian's death uh, as far as practices go, how veterinary medicine is done for these horses. Uh, but still, it was a tragic event. And I sometimes think... What could her prodigy have been like? What could her foals have accomplished if she had survived and gone on to be a broodmare? What kind of foals could we see have seen out of her? Because she was such a great horse. And to she was undefeated. I'm just like a ruffian fan girl. Like, she could have been... Um, her foals could have been amazing. And we'll never know. We'll never know because of a stupid match race. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I just thought it'd be nice to put this up in time for Ruffian's death anniversary. So, see you guys next time. Bye.